Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europe in Naples on a now irritatingly sunny morning, but I'll try to get close enough where we don't get glare. Uh, this is a 1971 Bentley. What the hell is this? It's not just a T-Series coupe. It's beyond that. Uh, a 1971 Bentley Mulliner Park Ward sunroof coupe. Uh, maybe they called it a saloon. I'm not sure. Either way, uh, you know, this is essentially the uh, hardtop version of the uh, ever-famous Corniche from Rolls-Royce. And this is what you drove if you were a bit of a sporting gentleman. Uh, you know, if you're Lord and Lady Ashbury and, uh, you know, the driver is, you know, just irritating to you, you want to drive your own car, uh, this is the car you bought. It was enormously expensive. Uh, it was uh, incredibly well-built. Uh, it really presented a, a very, you know, positive image to the world about your stature in the world, and uh, it's just absolutely incredible. I think it was made famous in the uh, Thomas Crown Affair, I believe. Uh, who the hell was that? Um, oh, my dad, all my prep just goes out the window. Uh, anyway, Thomas Crown Affair, I think it was the guy from Bullet, Steve McQueen. He was some kind of an art thief, and uh, he drove one of these things with uh, that gap tooth woman in the passenger seat, and it worked really, really well. Uh, and uh, for obvious reasons, it's one of the most beautifully styled cars of all time. Uh, the front end of this thing, I mean, come on. Uh, it is so instantly recognizable as old money and gorgeous. The swooping lines, the incredible curves, the classic, uh, you know, Bentley style grille. Uh, rolls Bentley, you know, it's not square, it's round, because again, this is a sporting car. This is for a gentleman who has, you know, sporting dogs and hunts in the field and, you know, really just doesn't need anyone to drive him. Uh, this is a left-hand drive car. It's finished in a two-tone, uh, lovely forest green. I'm not sure if that's original or not. I kind of hope it is, but you never know. Uh, it's uh, incredibly original, this thing. Of course, it does have, you know, maybe two or three repaints in its life, but that's it. I mean, this is not a car that was ever restored. Uh, this is just a car that was very well kept and driven and is currently owned by uh, a very nice uh, sort of uh, collectible guy. Well, he's not collectible, but his cars are. Uh, and uh, look at this thing. I mean, it is the most beautiful piece. To drive this thing around, you just feel like a million bucks. You're uh, eccentric. You must be some kind of, uh, uh, you know, retired millionaire on a, you know, weird budget. Anyway, look, I'm, I'm rambling. I just, the thing kind of takes my breath away. I love the old cell phone antenna. I think this thing actually had one of those rotary phones at one point, a uh, military-style radio thing. Okay, you can see the trunk, all original, the way it came. It's got this wall-to-wall uh, -wall green carpeting. Uh, yeah, it's a little rough around the edges, whatever. It should be under the books. You see we got some, I don't know, moth sated or something. Uh, here's a uh, original handbook. Actually, that's a reprint. Uh, chassis card, uh, Rolls-Royce Enthusiast Club. Uh, that's the remains of that old rotary style or early cell phone. Uh, but again, part of this car's charm is its incredible originality. Uh, you know, these things are only original once, and uh, when this thing is restored to Concours, it's a $100,000 car. Uh, the way it is now, it's the perfect candidate for, you know, either sticking in your collection in a corner somewhere and uh, just going out and looking at it and loving on it, driving it once in a while, or taking it to that level uh, to have a truly amazing piece. But everywhere you look on this thing, you just see incredible, you know, British engineering. And I don't say that ironically. I love the slotted screws. Uh, you know, I love the chrome bits. I love the little rivety things here holding the uh, the trunk liner on. Uh, you can just see the quality. And all of the, uh, the hand-built um, handles and latches, the way they all go together, uh, you can just tell in every square inch of this car, it's special and was made by people who really cared. Uh, you can see the Bentley logo on the bumper. I think that's part of the sporty appeal of this thing. Uh, little bullet reverse lights. You got a big exhaust pipe down there. Nice little muted tail lights with the amber. Beautiful big chrome bumper. Uh, I think those Bentley caps had a wheel lock added to them. That doesn't look factory Bentley to me. Uh, that's probably to prevent miscreants from... Uh, grabbing them. Uh, I, you know, what was it? Was it, uh, there's some golfer named, um, what the hell was his name? Oh God, Ventura, Venturi, Ken Venturi. Famous story. I guess, uh, you know, he was, uh, asked what kind of car he drove or something. He said, yeah, I have a Cadillac. You know, the only thing I worry about is that Chi Chi Rodriguez is going to steal my hubcaps, which is a terribly racist thing to say, but it did make me laugh. All right. Anyway, I'm digressing. Let's have a look under the hood. 
So 71, if I can get this, was the first year of the 6.75 liter V8 Rolls-Royce engine, uh, which they still used for, God, they probably even use it today. It's been used for years and years and years. Big, potent V8, very, very smooth. Uh, as you can see, this thing has air conditioning, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, that old style GM compressor puts out some cold air and makes this thing really drivable. Uh, it has all the original hood padding there. It's got the light. Uh, you know, it's not the most beautiful engine compartment in the world by any stretch, but it is all original and as it came, and that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, you can see the wiper treatment, the chrome. Uh, everything's just so beautifully made on this car. Uh, I did a 96 a few days ago, if you remember, and it had pretty much the exact same oil cap, which, again, pretty cool stuff. Uh, here we've got Bentley, uh, London Derby and crew, London Derby and crew. Should probably know all that stuff. But uh, anyway, there it is under the hood. All very original and proper. Runs great, this thing. And watch this. When you close the hood on that, I'm going to do it with one pinky. That is a well-made car. Uh, up top, you can see it's got the sunroof. I feel like that's kind of special. And uh, all the metal there, nice. Man, this thing could be such a restoration project. You know, the paint they used was probably nice when it went on, but it's bubbling a little bit. That's not rust, it's shrinkage. Uh, you know, so, you know, take this thing down to metal, put a $15,000 paint job on it, and you'll have something really special. Or just drive it the way it is. All right, the interior, all original and as it came. Look at the leather on the back seats there. Absolutely perfect. I love that it's green as well. Uh, you can see the stunning chrome uh, trim and the wood trim around all the windows. Uh, these great little grab handles are original. I hear they're hard to find on a car. They're usually long gone. Those little power scissor jacks to vent out the back windows. Uh, you know, everything beautifully put together. Uh, the seat belts are kind of hilarious in this thing. They're just hanging from hooks, but I guess that's an afterthought that they had to do in 71. Uh, again, with all the switches and knobs and the way it all operates, it's just absolutely incredible. The quality that's built into it and the way that it's lasted. Uh, you know, the chrome in the seats. Uh, you know, again, this stuff is just what made this car cost five times more than a comparable Cadillac of the same year, maybe even more. Uh, beautifully built door panels, again, with the wood on top, the switches. Get into these little buttons. That's cool stuff. Uh, you know, great little map pocket there. Uh, you got stereo speakers in the door. Again, pretty sporting car. Uh, little map pockets here, elastic still there. Uh, these are removable armrests for some bizarre reason. And uh, the seats, original, patina, as they came, no work done to them. Uh, you know, the preservation on this car uh, is pretty incredible. I mean, I get that it's not, you know, look at that. It's got worn out seats. Man, this is amazing. I mean, for a, what, 50-year-old car? What year is this thing? 71, 29? Like a 40-year-old car, 40 plus. That is mind-boggling, the way this thing has been preserved. But, of course, that's the way these things were. Uh, you can see it's got the original sheepskins there. The pedals come through them. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, Right-hand drive, this whisper-thin steering wheel. Oh, man, I just love it. All right, let's get in this thing. See if it fires up. <clears throat> I did bring an extra can of oil in a jump box, so you never know. You have to have it neutral to start it, I believe. Come on, boy. Oh, that's not good. There she goes. All right, now she's a runner. Takes a minute to start, but once it does, it's fine. I think it loses a little fuel pressure. Uh, okay, nice, smooth running V8. Uh, look at this beautiful wood dashboard with the glass gauges, uh, 130 mile an hour uh, speedometer. Uh, I'm sure that's a Smith's gauge. Uh, you know, the fuel, the amps. Again, this is a sports car for 1971 for English Lords. The sunroof works. I say that and then it doesn't. Look at that. So you can tell that was a pretty well-made sunroof for it still to be going now. Uh, we got a nice little chrome mirror. Uh, this is a crime against humanity. Some nitwit has put in a Pioneer stereo, which is just absolutely shocking. 
Uh, I would definitely find whatever original old tube radio this thing came with. Uh, cigarette lighter, great little center console here. Uh, this runs your AC, I believe. Yeah, now we got air coming out of there. Uh, this changes the direction of the air. We got our hazard switch, pull on. It's working. Nice. I like that light. It looks like the self-destruct on a spaceship. Uh, again, the way all of the matches and everything is just so beautifully made and beautifully finished. Uh, it's got a little glove box over there, and I don't know. I just love this thing. All right, let's go for a spin. So the one thing this car does get is attention. When you're going down the road, people are wondering, what the hell is that? Uh, you know, some people get it. They see... Uh, you know, an incredibly beautiful vintage machine. Other people just think you're a freak. Either way, the attention's kind of fun. So I was going to show you this window thing. I should have done that while we were sitting there, but I'll stop at the light up here. Because this absolutely blew my mind the first time I saw it. I had no idea how it worked. Uh, let's come to a stop. Okay, so the window, I'm gonna put mine down first. Let's see, there we go. So I go back up and it stops. And I'm like, what, what the hell, how does that work? Then I realized it stopped at the perfect vent position and to get it to go the rest of the way, hit this guy. And so it does. And I, you know, and I said, what kind of engineering is that? Where, you know, you have a dual stage window switch to give you the proper vent position. I presume it's not to ash out there because that's unbecoming. Uh, you know, an order a lady. Uh, you certainly don't want the commoners to see you ashing your cigarette out the side. So, uh, must just be for venting. I'll turn that air down a minute. And <laughs> I just can't begin to tell you how regal. Look at this. We got a Bentley up here. Are they like the modern Bentley. Looks like some kind of ridiculous thing a chic would have. This thing's so much more classic and lovely and original uh, and true to the uh, the Bentley name. Uh, you know, I get it. It's nice to have a 210 mile an hour Bentley speed with vents in the hood, but come on. You know, this is what, uh, this is what Bentley's supposed to be about. Uh, you know, fine, precise motoring, uh, with your nose in the air and a, and a feeling of joy all around you. Uh, anyway, what a terrific driver this car is. Uh, the guy who owned it, he said, man, I would have no trouble driving it across country. Uh, it's smooth, it's reliable, it uh, goes down the road nice, and he's right, it does. It's got a little bit of pep, certainly not much, and uh, is otherwise just really fun to drive. So, uh, anyway, 1971 Bentley Mulliner Park Ward Coupe. Uh, part of the T1 Saloon series. Pretty rare car. I can tell you they didn't make too many of these things. Uh, if you want something unusual for your collection, what are you waiting for? You got a green arrow. Now we're just going to sit through the yellow, through the red again. Okay. I'm sure she has a reason. Best price dealer. That's interesting. Okay, anyway, um, I'm trying not to get infuriated at the Q5 in front of me, and, uh, you know, I'm going to keep sitting here and act above it all in my Bentley T1 Mulliner Park Ward Coupe. We may put the sunroof open, and, uh, okay, there she goes. Thank you again for having a look. I'm going to try and relax, and I will see you with the next one. Take care.